fintech and digital banking is going to be really big in the next uh, 10 years and uh, being right smack in the uh, financial centre in Singapore and now with the climate that is uh, a lot more conducive because of uh, government support, because of the hype and uh, the education that is going around and the media exposure to it, people are getting to understand fintech and digital banking. So your corporate banking is going to change with new technology or fintech that's going to come into that area. Um, the investment banking space is going to change as well. Um, the way that we, we experience news uh, might change. Uh, the way that we are doing various kind of banking, not just uh, the end consumer, maybe even the, the, the employees of a bank could be very different. You know, thanks to Facebook and Twitter, right, people have uh, less tolerance and patience for, for, for anything. Yeah, so everything is soundbite, right? Um, Twitter is one sentence, Facebook is uh, short liners, and, uh, and we almost, everyone suffer from, uh, who, who's, who's, who's in this generation or who has been into this whole tech world, um, could suffer from uh, um, ADHD in a sense. <laughs> so we just want to hear like, okay, the quick uh, sentences or what you're trying to say, the quick headlines. So I would imagine the next generation of how people are going to be doing banking will be the same way, right? They want to ensure that um, I can do everything quite quickly on my mobile. Uh, maybe I do not even want to spend so much time talking to you about something in such great detail. All I want to know is the headlines. Uh, if I have sufficient information, I can make decisions. And the human aspect can translate in a different way. Yeah. So I'm not saying that we're going to wipe out the whole relationship understanding and uh, spending personal time together portion but it has to be accompanied with other things that is relevant so i give you an example if you are a, for example if you are a, a corporate banker right uh, in the whole crowdfunding space that's going to bring a risk to the corporate banking uh, sector if you are a relationship manager for example you need to learn a, a different skill set that will help you enhance as well what's going to be uh, out there uh, and it's no longer a, a time where we can just have one single skill set and to be very very good at it we need to have one single core good skill set and have secondary skill set or, or to have secondary general skill set Singapore being a very small country we have to look outwards right so we cannot be just doing business in our five to six million population uh, area, but we know what we're good at, we know what is our competitive advantage, we are legally very strong, we have uh, good corporate governance, uh, we can attract uh, stability and uh, trust in terms of uh, funding here, we are a financial centre and financial hub. So what we do is we house the good things that we're good at here, but we need to attract businesses that require those areas here, but they do their businesses out of Singapore. So that is, I think, the competitive advantage that we have. But having said that, uh, the whole ASEAN is 600 million population, but we are fragmented, right? We have different languages, different governance, uh, and, and even the ease of doing business is not so easy uh, from one country to another. You don't even, sometimes when you go into a new country, you don't even know what's the, the, the proper legal system over there. How do you even establish a, a business? And uh, if you go into the very micro details, even down to how do you uh, report tax, doing your accounting, and, and, and all that things that encompass the, the whole uh, business environment. So uh, I think with, uh, with, with a more cohesive uh, ASEAN, I think that would actually benefit us a lot. Uh, while we do have the ASEAN Economic Committee that's working on that, I think if we can speed up the entire process a lot more, it will benefit the entire um, ASEAN in a much more uh, speedy way. What we are doing differently now as a multifamily office is that we adopt the changes using technology. So the technology that we, we, we adopt uh, because of this also actually uh, help us to form our technology and innovation fund. And the Technology Innovation Fund invests into technology-related kind of companies. 
So why is this relevant to, to the current, uh, current uh, industry? Because the next generation is, is, is also different. They, they are uh, also looking at uh, investment in a different way. So they, under, they grow up in a generation where they use a uh, mobile phone. The, the, the uh, mobile phone penetration rate in Singapore is one of the highest in uh, Asia at uh, more than 80%. So we are already starting to adopt all that, uh, understanding the whole crop funding space, uh, understanding how to do certain kind of investment product digitally, how to use more systematic uh, kind of investment and trading, uh, how do we actually manage our clients with uh, a, a, a system or a technology that is very convenient yet is actually also very uh, mobile and relevant. I think we have uh, recently, like when I say recently, it's like recently in the last probably one, two years, we started to focus on, on, on this area. And, uh, and, and with, with this focus, uh, in the last one year, we are only starting to implement a lot of uh, things, changes, initiatives, which will take a longer period of time because London and uh, Australia are already ahead in, in, in those areas. So um, we, we, we have learning areas that we can learn from them, but at the same time, we need to move ahead uh, a lot quicker to, to ensure that we are competitive uh, in the whole fintech space. And that drives down as well to both the regulatory uh, areas, the whole workforce in the whole financial industry, the upgrading of skill sets, the, um, the adoption of financial technology, for example, and to educate and to learn uh, on those areas.